Some of the things that you'll need is a plastic container. I'm just gonna use a five gallon bucket. Some wire ties, some rebar, some angle iron, any kind of uh, cast iron. This is long as it's not stainless steel or chrome because it will put off toxic gas. Make sure, it don't matter if it's rusty or not, this is the process that's gonna clean it anyways. Uh, some tie wire, uh, a drill, a drill bit. Super washing soda or washing soda that is Soviet sodium carbonate. It's different than baking soda. Uh, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Uh, we have a manual battery charger and can't use a automatic one. Um, we're going to set this manually on two amp trickle charge. Something to work with your wire dikes, wire strippers, side cutters. And I got some, some scrap Romex that I'm going to steal the ground wire out of. So, oh yeah, in a, in a non-conductive um, stick or piece of, you know, one by or two by two something to hang your your cast iron from so basically what i'm doing here is drilling a couple holes to run our copper wire through to hold the rebar in so the rebar will go there and we'll <clears throat> tie it in with some some copper wire So now what we want to do is connect these two because that's where the um, positive on our battery charger is going to go. So cut this down a little bit. I don't have my knife on me. It's cool. Now I'm not going to use the bare, the bare copper wire on this. I'm going to strip a piece that's insulated. Uh, we are working with electrical current. It is a low voltage. This is our low amp, low volt. So not gonna tear your head off. So I am going to have to switch my method up a little bit. The handle, you want this thing suspended. And the thing is, is your water level has to be below your copper or else you'll get a pretty nasty green uh, chemical reaction in there. But the handle's not in bad shape. So as long as I can get it below the, the handle, 
Now, I went through this Wagner with uh, oven cleaner already, and you can still see it's got some got some gunk and some buildup some on it. So we want to we want to get all of that off because uh, moisture can get back there and create rust, like you can kind of maybe see in here. So we need to get that off uh, to properly season in this pan and make sure it's gonna. I don't even know if that's rust. That's probably biscuits and gravy from the 60s. <laughs> a little bit of pig lard. Sealed with a little bit of pig lard. That's why we're that's why we're doing this. So I personally I don't want to eat uh, pig and lard and cow and bacon and fried chicken from from the 50s. <laughs> so but uh really really bless my neighbor uh, gave me these yesterday a Wagner and a Martin so uh, that was our grandmother so I'm very very grateful uh, and blessed to even get something you know you can find this stuff at the Goodwill and or get it on eBay and you know but when it but I don't know those stories you know I don't know where they came from or whose grandma it was so this makes it a lot more special uh, when you know the lineage of it and sort of where it came from so that's that and what we're gonna do is ideally now I'm, I'm probably gonna be able to get most of it down in there so, yeah. but it's a perfect example of you know I thought oh a five gallon bucket would be perfect for this now the other one she gave me is a lot smaller this is the bigger of the two but so she's hanging in there nice I'm gonna grab the water hose and uh, fill it up with with water and show you the uh, the next step I'm actually gonna pull this out now that I've got it measured out all right I went ahead and moved this out into the sunlight a little bit because this works uh, best with hot with hot water or with, you know hot water warm water and then so I just figured I'd put it bake it in the sun and it might make for a little bit uh, better quality video I don't know the sun's going behind clouds so we'll see this you got to get washing soda and from the research that I've done you basically want to do one tablespoon per gallon of water and uh, they say that a little bit less is better than a little bit more so just kind of keep that in mind as well so just gonna go ahead and figure this up at five gallons since she's over five gallon bucket pretty good at math huh all right we got one two Stir that up nice. Get it worked in there. Now this stuff is uh, deodorizes, cleans, brightens. It's a laundry booster and it's pure and natural since 1874. Now make sure that the um, item the iron or cast iron item that you're cleaning does not touch your positive so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the battery charger fingers crossed hope it works it's pretty old last time it was in the Airstream it was working so but that was last year so we'll see so with the charger unplugged main thing here we are now going to connect a positive and a negative to the piece of cast iron that we're that we're cleaning and 
this should start bubbling pretty good and if it does it's a success and I'll grab the camera and show you all right so it says we're we're charging that's good And we got action. We're fizzing. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see them. See the bubbles fizzing. That's what we want. That's what we want right there. So you're cleaning it with electricity, and the the um, <clears throat> washing. Um, soda creates an electrolyte bath so it's science <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is and look you can already see see that stuff floating at the top that quick and I don't, you know from what I heard you can't overdo this stuff um, now we'll let off some gas so make sure that you know you're doing this in the outside of the area now it will take off paint too and you know we don't know what was used to paint what or whenever back in the day so just do it outside main thing is to not do anything chrome plated or um, chrome plated or stainless steel look at all that stuff floating already I tell you I used oven cleaner on this thing yesterday and I put some elbow grease into this thing <laughs> and uh, you know and then did it again overnight clean them this morning you know got a few hours and working to this and I uh, just couldn't get it quite there and uh, you know for a little bit of money these rebar is like two dollars and fifty cents a piece pre-cut at Home Depot I had the copper I had some stuff laying around so had the battery charger so I'm pretty fortunate on that if y'all don't just ask one of your neighbors or something and if you don't know your neighbors and you're not living life all right YouTube we are at almost two hours and look at that rust underneath grease you know whatever else build up and You know, say what you will, like, some people say not to clean, this and that. It's not hard to start seizing them over. But, you know, if, if you want this pan to be passed down to your family, your grandkids, you need to get this rust out from underneath all that seasoning. So try to do it right but I just want to show y'all like kind of I know I would have never got that clean never so I'm gonna check it here probably 15 minutes first thing I'm gonna do is unplug the battery charger then unplug the connections and I'm gonna pull it up and uh, we'll see it together if I have to take a little scouring pad, take it inside, rinse it down, take a little scouring pad to it, and bring it back out here, I will. So, first things first, unplug the charger. See, charger is off. Okay, so now I'm going to unplug this. And I'm going to set y'all down for a second. So, it looks like I am going to have to take this and hit that. I would have been scrubbing for weeks and weeks and weeks trying to get that off of there. So, let me uh, take this in, scrub it down, and we'll take a look at it together. Hey YouTube. So, I put it back in there, but what I had to do was uh, switch my, I'm not going to touch them because she's a running, turn my uh, rods around uh, if you don't have longer rods to switch and the rust is going to prohibit the process from working 
because when I pulled that pan down, everything that was floating on top went down into the water. When I dumped the water, it was it was fairly clean, so all the rust uh, went, I guess, to the wasn't fairly clean, but a lot of the rust gathered on the, um, the rebar. So and you can see it. So I had to switch them back around. Uh, my battery charger was reading uh, check battery, obviously. So it was most definitely a conductive um, issue. So I just flipped them around and uh, put new water in it, put more of the, um, the washing soda in there. And we're back off. I'm glad I got to see or show you all what I was referring to about the moisture buildup behind the crud. And yeah, I know like um, Granny and all them said, you know, oh, you know, don't wa don't ever wash your pans and season. Well, it's not too hard to season, and and you know they also had to you know go fetch water, you know, from a trough and and then use lye soap as well. So you know things are a little bit different these days and uh you know like i explained earlier in the video like i don't want to be cooking with lard from the 60s you know i don't i don't care um or you know biscuits and gravy with dairy and all that stuff in there like i'm going to clean it good that way it's in good shape for whoever i pass it down to and it's going to be seasoned and have fun with it and they'll get a really nice beautiful pan that'll last them you know another 60 to 100 years by getting all that crud off okay so here is the martin that i have the uh, martin stove and, and range i think is what it is so try to keep you on view so but you can see the buildup you can see the the crud and and uh that will hold moisture behind it and rust the pans out and uh Let's see here. You can see it where I was just scraping. Sorry. I was just scraping it off. There's rust underneath it. So, and, and now, not to mention, when there's this much stuff on the bottom or sides of a pan, it will heat unevenly. And you want you want it to cook. You want to disperse heat evenly. Because we're over here, where it's, you know, it does not near as much, you know, this is not coming off. So, this side of the pan... Uh, may heat differently than this side of the pan and it's all going to heat different than the the center all right friends it's been a couple days since the video and i just wanted to give a little update on it and these are the two pans that i redid and i put four coats of seasoning back on these with grapeseed oil and <laughs> made some cool little leather handles for them. And they look pretty good. Pretty happy with the turnout. I cooked in this one once already. So. got the stitches so I gotta be careful. Mr. Martin. Yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video. It's just a fun little science project kind of deal and I know there's several ways to do it. I just wanted to incorporate the electrolysis in there to just to have some fun with it and uh, encourage people to get out and do fun stuff maybe with kids with your grandkids with or with your grandparents and show them or about electrolysis or or whatever you know the main thing is is that we just kind of spread the love and be kind and learn stuff all you know learn as much stuff as we can and share it with others you know uh, in the end love wins so let's try to be kind to to everyone and and uh just think about the end and love wins so until next time uh thanks for tuning in uh to the unhippiest hippie channel and i'll talk to you soon peace